love you, Lord. And I lift my voice just to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. What you hear, let it be your sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let me say it one more time. Oh, I love you, Lord, and I live. Just to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, yes, God. in what you Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for another opportunity to gather around the bread that is your word, Lord. I pray today, Father, that you would fill us till we want no more, sustain us like never before. Father, I've done everything that I could do academically in the time that's been allotted, and now, Lord, I need you to fill me with your spirit. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the very meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father, I pray that you would speak, Lord God, to every single mind, Lord God. Speak to every single heart, Lord God, gathered in this place, Lord. We have come for no other reason, Lord God, but to bask in your presence, Lord God, and to hear a word from you. So, Father, I pray, Lord God, even for those that are watching by live stream, Father, speak something edifying, Lord God. Speak something, Lord God, that we need to hear, Lord God. Speak something that we need to be reminded of in this day, Lord God, as we grow in Christ, as we grow closer to you, Lord God, before you're returning. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every glad believer would say amen and amen. Come on, can we put our hands together in this house this morning? This morning. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You deserve honor. You deserve glory. You deserve our adoration. None other deserves glory. None other deserves praise. But Jesus, but Jesus, but our Savior, but our Keeper, but our Redeemer. Come on, do I have any believers in here today that know who he is? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Well, certainly I'm grateful to be back with every single one of you, my Perfecting Faith Church family. This is the first Sunday of fall. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful for this harvest season. I'm so grateful for everything that God is doing. We certainly honor the presence of the Lord that's already in this place. I know that you can feel it, and I pray that you do feel it by live stream this morning. While we honor the presence of God, we certainly want to honor our pastor, even in his absence, the senior pastor of Perfecting Faith Church and the persons of Pastor Donald McClurkin Jr. Come on, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Let's honor our pastor, our leader, we thank God for you, sir. We thank God for you so much. And I can't even neglect to thank the senior assistant pastors of this great house and the persons of Pastor Don and Rebecca West. Hallelujah. We certainly honor them. And to all of the ministerial staff here at Perfecting Faith Church, thank you all just for doing what you do, serving God, serving God, serving the people and God. Hallelujah. Well, I don't want to delay any time at all because I'm sure that we all have so much to prepare for this week. But I do just want to speak a word into your spirits. Um, I don't know that this is going to be necessarily a, 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 a shouting, jubilant message. I think that there's some things in the body of Christ we have to be brought back to the level of sobriety with. 
as we're growing, as we're matriculating, as we're growing closer to God, there, there has to be a sobering at some point. And so uh, the assignment that I have is a little bit different, I believe. Um, but I believe that it's going to bless us, and I believe that it has already blessed me as God has dropped it in my spirit. First Samuel, the 15th chapter. First Samuel, the 15th chapter, as you've heard in your hearing, beginning at the 13th verse. First Samuel, the 13th chapter, 15th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. And it reads like this. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord. Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Samuel said, What meaneth this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. The Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord have sent me and have brought a God the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil and the sheep and the oxen and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Verse 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. I want to pull from the 22nd verse, if I can, our, our subject for today. Uh, would you look at a neighbor and just say, neighbor, y'all got to talk back louder than that. Say, neighbor, obey. Obey. Put your hands together. Give God praise. That's what we want to talk about today. Obey. Obey. Beloved of God, this past year, as May came around the corner, I found myself crossing over the threshold of my 25th birthday. My God, my God, 25 years living and moving and having my being, 25 years of experiences and exposures, 25 years of learning and growing, and I could not, would not neglect to thank all of those that helped me grow as I traveled along my way. I know that some of us in the house today might be waiting for me to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I certainly don't know where I would be. And that is true. But in a natural sense, I, 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 I was gifted to be in a house with something and some people called parents. Mm, yeah. Parents, parents, parents. And, and, and these parents, after, after bringing me into the world, found themselves locked to the right and the responsibility to prepare me from my infancy to navigate this world on my own as a human being. A parent's job is to, to guide you and to instruct you and to provide the very best possible avenues that they have to raise you up to stand in your full potential. Do I have any parents in the room today? I just, I just want to take survey. Do I have any parents in the room today? Good, because I'm not one. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not one of them yet. Glory to God. And so God gave me parents. He, he gave me parents. And, and, and I know that some of you are looking at me, and I, I know that I look like a preacher now. I know I look like a preacher now, but, but if you were to have a conversation with my parents, I don't know that they would have said that I would have been a preacher based on how I was as a child because when I came out of the womb, I didn't have the mannerisms or the characteristics of someone who, who, who would look like they would be 
a preacher. I'm just going to be honest. I'm being transparent today. I hope y'all don't mind it. It might be your testimony too. I, I, I was a question asking, a, a back talking, smart mouthing kind of child. I was, I was a hard headed kind of child. Is there anybody in here today that, that might be able to admit that you at one point in your life might have been a hard headed child? <laughs> no, nobody would ever look at you and say, oh, this one here is going to be one that, that, that could stand in the posture of, of responsibility. But, 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 but I just want you to understand that, that, that shortly after receiving the right hand of fellowship, Y'all don't get what I'm saying. I said the right hand of fellowship. If anybody here got a mother or a father, you might know what that right hand of fellowship is. Shortly after receiving the right hand of fellowship, I was engrafted and, and, and introduced to the house of God known as obedience. Yeah, yeah. Somebody say obedience, 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 obedience. Obedience is compliance with order, request, or law, or submission to somebody else's authority. And I know in church and in even, even this society, it's not a word that we take too kindly nowadays too because we hear the word obedience and immediately we think about being locked and limited and restricted and reeled in. We feel as if we have no obligation to be accountable and submissive to anything or anybody. We feel like we're just freelancers. We feel as though we've matriculated through life enough ups and downs and twists and turns and hills and valleys that we have the expertise to handle life situations on our own. And in this Christian walks, feelings, while we think, while these feelings might make us think that we are somebody that has confidence or, or consciousness about the things going on around us in this world, while they may make us feel like we're mature and matriculated, I want you to consider the possibility and the very true reality that it actually shows just the opposite. It really shows the signs of someone that hasn't been grown at all. Let me explain it real quickly because we understand that anybody that has experience in any piece of life will tell you that they don't have all the answers. Anybody that has experience in any part of this life will tell you that they haven't seen all that there is to see and hear everything that there is to hear. They are constantly growing and grooming into everything that God has purposed and planned for them to be. And it's in the growing and the grooming that we can find a, 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 a willingness to be obedient to the will and the word of God because just like a parent God knows what is best for us. He knows our ends from the beginnings. He knows everything inside of us that has to be brought out, everything that has to come to its manifestation. Mm. We heard the last few weeks our, our pastor was preaching and he was teaching us about what it means when God says no. And he told us the week before that, he, he taught us about what it means to follow leadership and Christ. And I just believe that whether Christ calls us to follow him or, or whether or not we hear the know of God in our lives, that there is still the dangerous tendency to think that we can operate outside of the will of God and still lay hold to the blessings that he has for us. It, it, it's a dangerous thing to think that you can be outside of what God has instructed you, what God has commanded you, and think that you can still walk up to the prize circle and claim everything that you didn't pay the price for. Uh, I knew it was going to be quiet. I already told y'all this, this, this right here. Uh, I, it wasn't going to be easy for me to proclaim because... Standing in the pulpit as a preacher, it's easy to say God's going to do it. God's going to open doors. God's going to bless you. God has houses ready for you and marriages ready for you and, and business and opportunities ready for you. You get excited about that. You, you, you want to hear those things because they sometimes tickle your ear. And we would go dancing out of that door right there, right into the middle of Main Street with a, with a $5 buck and a shout and all of that foolishness because of a word. But, but the responsibility sometimes of a preacher is to bring correction and alignment to the people. Is to bring correction and alignment to the people. We shout over words that, that, that don't give us a sense of accountability. 
we, we don't want to be accountable. We just want to walk up and get and get what we what we desire. Mm. As long as it seems that there's no obligations or requirements on our part, we're just fine. But the blessings of God have requirements. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the blessings of God have requirements. All right, I, let, let me get to my message because, you know, y'all getting quiet and you're scaring me. I thought that we all grew up here in the same doctrine. But let me go to Deuteronomy 28 and just show you something. Deuteronomy 28, it says there, and it shall come to pass that if you shall Hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you should hearken to the voice of the Lord. Now, I know we love this part. We want to talk about, I'm blessed in the city. That's the next verse. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Blessed be the fruit of your ground. Blessed be the fruit of your cattle and the increase of your kind and the flocks and the sheep. And that's all good. But we cannot neglect to skip past the part where he's saying that there's an obligation to listen to what it is God is telling us to do. The blessings of God have requirements. Come on here, y'all. Y'all, y'all know the beatitudes. Every beatitude had something that blesses the meek, blesses the poor. There are requirements to who and what can be labeled as blessed. Mm. So the requirements for the blessing and for the overflow to take place in my life is directly tied to my obedience. Sometimes we get frustrated with God after hearing the promises that he makes us at the time that he makes it because we think that it's going to happen quickly and, and we've kept matriculating through life and time has expired and we haven't seen the manifestations of God and sometimes we want to act like it was God's fault that the things that he said didn't come to pass because we never really want to take an introspective look at ourselves and see whether or not what we're doing aligns with God's will and his word. Uh, y'all got to help me here. We, 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 we want the manifestations, but we just don't want to be in order. Mm. And so, and so, and so, I want you to understand that we don't have the right or the authority or the power to think that we can alter what God has told us to do as followers of Jesus Christ. Everybody say, hey, to Pastor McClurkin, he's watching. God bless you, Pastor McClurkin. We don't have the right or the authority or the power to think that we have the ability to change what God has told us to do. There are no substitutes. There are no other plans. There are no other agendas that we can formulate outside of his will that will be acceptable and give us access to what God has promised us. I only got a few more minutes, so I might as well get out of here. I think I've made my point. Y'all getting a little stiff anyhow. We're in the book of First Samuel today, the 15th chapter. We might as well just go on. First uh, Samuel, the 15th chapter, First Samuel, the 15th chapter, the book of First Samuel is a very interesting book because we see some changes that take place with God's people, Israel, and, 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 and it's in this, this book, in the 8th chapter, we see uh, one of the major changes that take place is the move of Israel from a theocracy to a monarchy. Come on, y'all know the story. I was going to take a sip of water, but y'all know the story. Uh, uh, in the eighth chapter, they moved from a, a, a theocracy to a monarchy. In the eighth chapter, we see that because of the bad representation of God in the earth, the sons of the prophet Samuel, who at this point was very old, were taking bribes and issuing unjust judgments on the people of Israel. And the elders of Israel gathered together and they told this prophet, he said, listen, we, we, we want a king to rule us. We want to have a king like all of the other nations. We, we no longer want to listen to those that are put in place because it seems like they may be leading us astray. And I just want to pause parenthetically to insert that don't allow people that aren't representing God the best way to cause you to move out of God's will. We heard from Pastor Chris Smith this morning how there are many false prophets that are rising up in this time. And it's not because of, 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 of we shouldn't allow false prophets, people that come in the name of the Lord, who have alternative agendas to move us out of our place of obedience to what God has told us. We all have individual relationships. 
So they neglected the memory of all that God had done and equated their waywardness of humanity as deity. They thought that because of the way that these men of God were acting, that this must be God acting on our behalf. So the story goes on, and, and, and God has a conversation with Samuel. He says, listen, th- this isn't my will. This isn't what I want for the people. As a matter of fact, let, let me warn you what will happen. What is the cost of going outside of my will? I want you to understand. Tell the people that he, if you take a king onto you, he's going to take your sons and make them his personal horsemen. He'll have people reaping your personal harvests. Your daughters will end up being your cooks. You will be completely degraded of where you are now if you step outside of my will. And it's and it's funny that even though sometimes we see the very realistic cost of what it is to step outside of God's will, we still choose it. We still choose it. We still decide to go astray. We still decide that we want to do what we think is best. Disobedience will cost you. I said, disobedience will cost you. This is not an easy message at all. Disobedience will cost you. It may not seem like it at first, but you give it a little while. And you're going to see that disobedience will cost you. Preacher, preacher, I, I, see, I see people around me that aren't saved and they seem to be living such blessed lives. They seem to be living such abundant lives. They seem to... Disobedience will cost you. It may take a while. Uh, we don't we, we we can't forget that God does cause it to rain on the just as well as the unjust and it may seem as though you've obtained the things and the positions and the people and the prominence outside of God's will but what I'm telling you from my own personal experience is that I know what it's like to step outside of God's will thinking that I'm doing better for myself than he can do for me the things that I do for myself won't last long. We, we've heard it said that only the things that God ordains, God will sustain. And so if I'm doing something that God did not ordain, there's no way for him to sustain it because it was not his will to begin with. Mm. You'll see it fall. You'll see it fall. I've, I've experienced going after things that weren't God. I've experienced pursuing people that weren't godly people, and I've seen it fall. God had to remove me and extract me out of certain environments because you have to understand that God will protect his investments. God, God, God will protect his investments. He, he placed something down inside of you that he cannot allow an Ichabod to come upon you. He will not remove his glory off of his investments. And so if he has to cut you, if he has to hurt you, if he has to allow you to feel a moment of pain for you to get back in line. Oh, he doesn't mind it. He's a father. He's a father. He, he has the right hand of fellowship. He, do, he doesn't mind any pain. The Bible tells us that, that who he loves, he also chastens. Mm, I only have a few more minutes. So in this 15th chapter of Samuel, we, we, we see an example of what it looks like to be partially obedient. First Samuel 15, I want to go to, to, to the, the, let's go to the first verse. Can we go there real quickly? Go to the first verse. First Samuel 15, beginning at the first verse, says like this, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel and how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now, these are the instructions, go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both men and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. God gives specific directions. And, 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 and we can't act like we didn't hear him. We are accountable for everything that we hear, including this message right here. We, we, we are accountable. We cannot unhear what we've already heard. When the instructions are given, it's up to us to not act like we're ignorant when something goes wrong. We know what God has told us to say and to do. And how to operate in order to give us the victory. If we go down to verse 7, verse 7 tells us, But Saul and the people spared the king of the Amaleks. 
the best of their sheep and their oxen and the fattings of the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse that they utterly destroyed. Sometimes we intend to obey God all the way, but we don't fully follow through on it. Our intentions are in the right place. Our heart is in the right place. But there's sometimes a creeping in our own hearts and in our minds and our own desires. The secret place of us just wants a little something different than what God commanded us to do. Mm. Mm. I'm be careful. We have to pay close attention to the intents of our hearts. The Bible talks about how our hearts are desperately wicked. They're deceitful. Our ways don't always lead us into the way that God would have us to go. Verse 13. This is the part that blessed me when I was studying. Because after we've done what we know we shouldn't do, we want to act like we didn't do it. After I've, I know pastor's watching, I'm going to say it. After I've taken the cookie out the cookie jar, after mom told me not to do it, I still went on and did it and then act like I didn't do it. I'm not a glutton. I'm just sharing my testimony. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 13 says, and Samuel came to Saul after God had a conversation with Samuel. God had told Samuel what it is that the people of Israel did. And the man of God comes to who was given the charge. The man of God comes to you, it's not for no reason. There's a reason why, come on, we, we, we saw when, 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 when David was approached after being with Bathsheba, there's a reason why the man of God has to come. And you know, sometimes we just want to act like we didn't do nothing. So you read here in the 13th verse, it says, And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be the Lord! Hallelujah! Glory, good to see you, man of God. How's everything? Are your kids good? Your car look nice. It look nice. I see your horse. You got new hoofs on there. I see. You want to act like you don't know. <laughs> and, 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 and in verse 14, Samuel says, what is the meaning of the bleeding of the sheep in my ear? Why, why can I hear what God told you to kill? And the lowing of the oxen, why is it that I'm still hearing the very things that God told you to destroy? Why are they still in existence? Why? Have you forsaken what it is that I've told you God told you to do? Saul said they brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the very best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord. Sometimes we, we, we think that we can give God a little something and we could just do what we want to do. If I, if I just throw $5 in the offering bucket, I can continue to go on living my life. I don't have to be accountable to anybody. I don't have to live righteously. It doesn't matter what goes on behind closed doors. I, I don't have to fulfill my calling. I don't have to pray for who I was called to pray for. I don't have to speak what I was called to speak as long as I just continue in my duty. There's no need for obedience. Hmm. Verse 22, I'm on my way out of here. This is good to me. And Samuel said, uh, half the Lord has great a delight in burnt offerings. And so God doesn't want to see your worship and you're out of obedience. God doesn't want you coming into the sanctuary, lifting up hands that aren't holy. There's, there, there, there's nothing that you can do that can replace what he told you to do, oh, we, 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 we want to make sure that we sing, we want to make sure that we play, we want to make sure that we preach, we want to make sure that we usher because this is my duty, this is my duty, this is my duty, but your life is out of alignment. Oh God, I hope that you don't think I'm preaching with condemnation because this word had to hit me first. Your life is out of alignment. And you think that the anointing of God is going to rest on a mess. It won't. It won't. It won't. Behold, to obey is better. That, that means that there is a, a, a notable difference. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken, to listen to incline your heart, your mind, your acts, your life 
to what it is God has told us to do. I got to get out of here because we only have a few more seconds. I, I want you to know that, that the blessings of God have requirements. The very first psalm in the Bible tells us that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, it shall prosper. For the ungodly are not so, but they're like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, obey. Ah, it, 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 it may not make sense to you, and it may not always feel right, but I want you to know that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so just like a parent, I have to acknowledge uh, that God knows greater for me than I know for myself. Uh, I have to acknowledge that God would never lead me astray. And so if I'm going to follow after God, if I'm going to obtain the blessing, if I'm going to be victorious, uh, if I'm going to obtain the promise, uh, I have to make up in my mind uh, that I will obey. I will obey. I have to first deny myself. Uh, Pick up my cross uh, and follow after God. Uh, people might say that I'm crazy. People might tell me that there's more efficient ways. Uh, God, people might tell me that don't take all of that. People might tell me that I want you to just do what feels right. But I want you to know that God's got a way that you can't go over. God's got a way that you can't go under. God's got a way that you can't go around. Uh, but you must come through by the door. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, obey. Saints used to say, trust and obey. Trust and obey to be happy in Jesus. You got to trust. You got to trust. You got to trust and obey. I will trust him. I will follow him. I will listen to him. I will run after him. I will obey. I will press, like Pastor Smith said, I will press towards the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. I will obey. No longer being a refuge. No longer going my own way. No longer going astray. But I'm coming into alignment. I'm getting ready to be focused. I'm getting ready to be disciplined. I'm getting ready to do the will of God. If that's you, somebody say, yeah. Somebody say, I will, I will, I will obey. Everybody's standing. I will obey. I will. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen too many pitfalls that I created for myself. I, I've seen too many obstacles that I didn't have to necessarily go through. If I, if I would have just trusted him, if I would have just hearkened to him, if I would have stopped just giving him my service and not giving him my unconditional worship, my unconditional, yes, my mind, my mentality, my heart, everything that's within me, I would have been places that I didn't need to necessarily go into. And so, 
that's the charge that God gave me today. It is to remind the people of God that we have an obligation to obey. That blessings don't just come because you have things. That doesn't make you blessed. Blessing, when, when people say, I'm blessed and highly fed, ask them if they're obedient. I, I ask them how obedient they're living. And if, and if the fruit, I know, I know some say, you, you can't judge me. I'm just a fruit inspector. Pastor Plummer said it. I'm just a fruit inspector. If you say you're blessed, there ought to be something to show forth. Obeying God is not always easy. It's not always comfortable. It's not always convenient. But it is beneficial. It will bless you. Your family will be blessed because of the obedient decisions that you made. Generations will be shifted by the generational blessings that God has ascribed according to the obedience that follows us. And so this word is not a word of, of, of condemnation, but it's a word of reevaluation. That, that, that when we leave this place, that we would look back and think back to what God has told us to do. We may find ourselves in troubles and storms that God never had intended for us simply because we drop one thing. Oh they, oh, they killed. They killed who was supposed to be killed in Amalek, but they didn't kill all of it. What, what is still living that you're supposed to kill? That's, that's my question. What, what have you allowed to reside in your circles? What have you allowed to reside in your minds? What have you allowed to go dormant at your hand that God told you, get rid of? Because it's a weight. It's holding you back. It's not allowing you to progress. It's not allowing you to move any further than where you are. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I thank you for this word today, Lord God. I thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that we are accountable for what we hear, Lord God, that we are accountable, Lord God, as, as disciples, as followers of Jesus Christ to the things that we hear, Lord. We can't cherry pick, Lord God, what you do say and what you don't say, Lord. We have to accept all of your word, all of your commandments, Lord God. Oh, Father, today, I thank you today for the reevaluation view valuation in our hearts, Lord God, in our minds, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would cause change to happen, Lord God, that if we're off the right path, Lord God, that you would cause us, Lord God, to run, Lord God, run, not walk, not stroll, Lord God, but run back into the place, Lord God, that you have for us, Lord God. Allow us to get back in line with you. If there's anybody in this house today that, that might find themselves out of the obedience of God, there's no condemnation because everybody in this room, everybody watching by live stream, anybody with an open ear and heart has found themselves in disobedience to God and God and his word. And, but the thing about Jesus Christ is that though a just man falls seven times, we can get back up again. We can run back and get in line with God today. And so if there's one in this room today, if there's one that says, listen, Brother Brett, I... I don't feel as close to God as I know I should be. I don't, I don't know that I've been following everything that he's been requiring of me. I don't know that I'm in a connected relationship with Jesus Christ. And it might be because of me. It may not be because of him. It may, it may be because of some things that I'm doing, some things that I did. And I want to get it right today with every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you today, we, we want to pray with you. We, we want you to be liberated. We want you to be free. We don't want you to leave out of these doors or off of this live stream without receiving the gift that God has for you. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is restoration. And so if there's one today that says, Brother Brett, I don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of my sins. Would you just raise your hand? Our ministerial staff here is ready. We are willing. We are waiting to pray with you. We are willing to meet you at the foot of the cross. Is there one in the room today that says, I need a relationship with Jesus Christ? Come on, can we put our hands together? Hallelujah for those that have raised their hands. Now, for those that have raised their hands, if, if there were some, would you just come down here to the altar? Our ministers want to pray with you. Come on, come on. Don't delay the time any longer. We, we, we want to welcome you back into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. We want you to know that it's not too late for you. We want you to know 
that God is standing ready, willing to deliver, ready, willing to save. Hallelujah to Jesus. Even as our ministers are praying, can, can we pray with those that are watching by live stream today? Would you just lift your hands and, and just say, Father, I thank you for not giving up on me. I thank you that your love is unconditional. And Lord, I make the choice to turn away from my disobedience and to obey you and to listen to you and to follow after you. I forsake myself and I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I thank you for all of these, Lord God, today that have, that have heard your voice in their hearts, Lord God. They've heard you knocking at the very door of their hearts. And, Lord, I pray today, Lord God, that as, as they're recommitting their hearts and their minds to you, Lord God, that they would never be the same. Lord God, that you would allow transformation to take place right now, Lord God, in this moment, in this time, Lord God, in this season. Even as we're moving forward, Lord God, that you would cause them to get to know you in a greater way. Father God, I pray that you would meet them, Lord God, in their private prayer closets when they leave here, Lord God. Lord God, when they call out to you, Lord God, you said that you would save. You said that your heart, your ear, Lord God, would be inclined to our voices. So, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would cause us, Lord God, to follow you more closely, Lord God, and to obey you, Lord God, so that we can see the blessings and the promises that you have made in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And to this, all the people of God would say amen and amen. Come on, put those hands together today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. For those of you that are watching my live stream today and you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ back into your heart, you found yourself back in alignment. First of all, I want to say congratulations because coming into the family of God is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. And how can we get connected with you? How, how can we walk alongside of you? Well, there are going to be four words that come up on the screen today. It's going to read, I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer prayer. If you just type that in the comment section, we'll be able to get in contact with you. Our ministerial staff, as they're doing it in the house, will be able to get in contact with you and allow you to know that you don't have to walk this thing by yourself, but that we're here ready and right to walk alongside you as you go in Christ. All the people of God, come on, we put our hands together today for the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 